2 Samuel 2 1 to 3 33 through the Bible chapters 2 to 3 theme David made king over Judah David by God's direction goes up to Hebron where he is made king over the tribe of Judah Abner the captain of Saul's army makes Saul's son Ishbosheth the king over the other eleven tribes of Israel civil war ensues and it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord saying Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron, 2 Samuel 2 1. After this refers to the time after the deaths of Saul and Jonathan and the period of mourning for them. Now that Saul is out of the picture, David wants to know what to do. He asks the Lord, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? Why did he ask that question? he is in Philistine country. Saul is dead, and David is to be the next king. What should his next move be? He waited until he received his instructions from the Lord. David had learned that he must wait on the Lord for direction. God told him to go up to Hebron. Hebron is located in the south of the land, not too far from the Philistine border. God is telling him to move cautiously. He is not to go up and arbitrarily take over Israel but to move up into the land to make himself available. So David went up thither, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail Naba's wife the Carmelite, 2 Samuel 2 2. When David headed for Hebron, he took with him the two women who were his wives at this time. Perhaps you are asking, does God approve of a man having two wives? No. This matter will cause David a great deal of trouble, and later he will have other wives and his men that were with him did David bring up, every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron, 2 Samuel 2 3. David's loyal followers came with him and settled their families in the cities of Hebron. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jabesh Gilead, were they that buried Saul, 2 Samuel 2 4. Now that David has made himself available, the men of his own tribe come to anoint him king over Judah. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that ye have showed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him, 2 Samuel 2 5. David does a very wise thing. The men who buried Saul were devoted to him, and now David thanks them for it. David has a great respect for the anointed of the Lord, he had two opportunities to slay him and make himself king, but he did not do it. David's good points are often passed over, because his sin seems to obscure them. It is like a cloud that covers the sky and shuts out the sunshine of his life. In many respects David was a wonderful man. Afterward he paid for his great sin every day of his life. David complimented the men of Jabesh Gilead. And now the Lord show kindness and truth unto you, and I also will requite you this kindness because ye have done this thing. Therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and be ye valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them, 2 Samuel 2 6-7. Then he asked for their support and devotion to him as king, even as they had given it to Saul. Notice that he is moving in a diplomatic and commendable manner at this time. We should recognize the fact that both Saul and Jonathan had sons, and one of them would have been the normal one to come to the throne had not God intervened. Abner, who had been captain of Saul's hosts, moved immediately to make one of them king. Notice what he did. But Abner the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim, and made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all Israel, 2 Samuel 2 8-9. Here is the beginning of the division of the kingdom which will come after the reign of Solomon when Jeroboam leads a rebellion. This is the first fracture. At first David is made king over the southern kingdom of Judah, but the northern tribes make Ishbosheth, a son of Saul, their king. Ishbosheth Saul's son was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months, 2 Samuel 2 10-11. This was an interval of civil war, war between the northern kingdom and David's kingdom, Judah, in the south. 
It depleted the resources and energy of the nation. It was indeed a tragic thing. And Abner the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. And Joab the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David, went out, and met together by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool, 2 Samuel 2 12 and 13. Abner and Joab were attempting to negotiate a solution to prevent civil war. But as you well know, and certainly we in this country ought to know by now, when you have folk on one side who are determined on one course and people on the other side who are determined on another course, negotiation is practically valueless. It is generally an exercise in futility, and that is what happens here. And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise, and play before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. Then there arose and went over by number twelve of Benjamin, which pertained to Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. And they caught every one his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together, wherefore that place was called Helkoth has Urim, which is in Gibeon, 2 Samuel 2 14-16. Abner said, Let the young men come together in battle. Joab agreed. This was the way they were going to settle the issue. And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel, before the servants of David, 2 Samuel 2 17. David is a veteran of many campaigns now. He is not the innocent little shepherd we met at first. He has spent time hiding in the caves and dens of the earth, and he has collected men of war around him. He is rugged and adept at this type of warfare. So his men are able to win a victory over Abner and his host, an army of superior numbers. Now I want to call your attention to something that took place which will play a prominent part later on. Abner was followed by Asahel. Asahel was a brother of Joab, who was David's captain. Abner was Saul's captain. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asahel, and Asahel was as light of foot as a wild roe, 2 Samuel 2 18. Zeruiah, by the way, was a sister of David. She had three outstanding sons. And Asahel pursued after Abner, and in going he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner, 2 Samuel 2 19. Asahel took out after Abner. He is not a match for him at all, and Abner warns him. And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn thee aside from following me, wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab thy brother? How be it he refused to turn aside, wherefore Abner with the hinder end of the spear smote him under the fifth rib, that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there, and died in the same place, and it came to pass, that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died stood still, 2 Samuel 2 22-23. Abner warned him to stop his pursuit. Asahel refused, and finally Abner turned around and drove a spear through him. Abner killed the brother of Joab. That means that in Joab's heart there will be bitterness, hatred, and the desire to get revenge. His revenge will come later, as we shall see. And they took up Asahel, and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at break of day, 2 Samuel 2 32. Asahel's funeral closes this chapter. After the funeral Joab and his men went all night and came to Hebron at the break of day. They reported to David all that had taken place. Civil war continues. Chapter 3 continues the account of the long civil war that weakened the nation. Gradually David gained in strength. Abner, after a falling out with Ishboshed, deserted to David. Joab, David's captain suspected Abner and, seeking revenge for his brother Asahel's death, murdered him. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker, 2 Samuel 3 1. The condition of the land is one of internal strife. There is civil war. The nation's energies are being depleted, and their resources are being exhausted. David has been in Hebron for seven and one half years. And unto David were sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Amnon, of Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and his second, Chiliab, of Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom the son of Machah the daughter of Talmai king, 
of Geshur, and the fourth, Adonijah the son of Hagith, and the fifth, Shephatiah the son of Abital, and the sixth, Ithream, by Egla David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron, 2 Samuel 3 2-5. You can see that David had more than two wives. He had others, and this will cause a great problem for David. God did not approve, and David did not get by with this. Among the list of David's sons is one by the name of Absalom. I am sure you are familiar with his story. Later on we will see him lead a rebellion against David. This is the son that David apparently wanted to follow him as king, but he was brutally killed by Joab in battle. It broke David's heart when he was slain. Who is the mother of Absalom? Makkah who was the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. Who was the king of Geshur? If you go back to 1 Samuel 27 8, you will find that David and his men invaded the Geshurites, and the Gezrites, and the Amalekites. I believe David was wrong in doing this. He slew these people, including the king of Geshur, and apparently took his daughter captive. She eventually became his wife. They had a son, and it was this young man who led the rebellion against David. My friend, God saw to it that David did not get away with his sin. It is important for us to note this. Abner joins with David. This chapter tells us about a long period of civil war that in many ways is uninteresting as far as you and I are concerned. Abner, who had been the chief captain of Saul's army, had pushed Ishbosheth, Saul's son, onto the throne. Being an older man who had had such a high position, he was not apt to listen to the young king. He did something he should not have done. And Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Wherefore hast thou gone and unto my father's concubine? Then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head, which against Judah do show kindness this day unto the house of Saul thy father, to his brethren, and to his friends, and have not delivered thee into the hand of David, that thou chargest me today with a fault concerning this woman? 2 Samuel 3 7-8 it was the exclusive right of the man who was the successor to the throne to cohabit with the deceased king's concubines. Abner infringed on the rights of Ishbosheth and became angry when the king rebuked him for taking Rizpah, one of Saul's concubines, into his own harem. Candidly, the young king was justified in rebuking Abner, but Abner became so enraged that he immediately began to make overtures to David. So do God to Abner, and more also, except, as the Lord hath sworn to David even so I do to him, to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him, 2 Samuel 3 9-11. In other words, Abner made known his intention of abandoning the house of Saul and allying himself with David. He was going to help David become king over the twelve tribes. Now Ashbosheth did not say a word to Abner. He was a son of Saul, but he had no army and no training whatsoever. He was not a warrior like his brother Jonathan. He had been brought up in the king's palace. And he feared Abner. And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and, behold, my hand shall be with thee, to bring about all Israel unto thee. And he said, Well, I will make a league with thee. But one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face, except thou first bring me how Saul's daughter, when thou comest to see my face, 2 Samuel 3 12 and 13. David told Abner he could come only if he brought Saul's daughter, Mihau, with him. You remember that Mihau was David's first wife. Saul had taken her away from David. Believe me, David had a checkered career. This is the reason he suffered he let sin enter his life. But above it all was a faith in God that never failed. He wanted more than all else to have a wonderful relationship with God. And Ishbosheth sent, and took her from her husband, even from Fultiel the son of Laish. And her husband went with her along weeping behind her to Baharim. Then said Abner unto him, Go, return. And he returned, 2 Samuel 3 15-16. Abner's overture was accepted by David. We will find now that David will become king of all twelve tribes because of Abner's treachery. Joab murders Abner. All of this time Joab has not forgotten that Abner had slain his brother. 
And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly, and smote him there under the fifth rib, that he died, for the blood of Asahel his brother, 2 Samuel 3:27. So Joab avenged his brother's death. When David heard that Joab had murdered Abner, he did not approve of it at all. In fact, he accused Joab of doing a very terrible thing. Concerning Abner's death he said a very interesting thing. And the king lamented over Abner, and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth? 2 Samuel 3:33. Why did David say that? It certainly is a strange epitaph to give a person. Abner was in Hebron. Hebron was one of the cities of refuge where a murderer was safe. In that city Joab could not have touched him. But Joab quietly took Abner aside and said to him, Come out here. I want to talk with you. You are the captain on one side, and I am the captain on the other side. It would be nice if we could get together. So Abner stepped outside the city of refuge, and Joab killed him. That is why David said Abner died as a fool dies. He was a fool to leave Hebron. Isn't that a message for us today? There is a refuge for every sinner in Christ. Regardless of how high a man's IQ is or what his position in life might be, if he is outside the place of refuge, he is lost. If the truth were told at many funerals today, the preachers would have to say about the departed person, a fool has just died. He would not turn to Jesus Christ who is the place of refuge. Are you resting in Christ?